Hi guys, in today's breakdown I will show you how I created this wall lamp. And this is how it looks like on the fireframe. And I can also enable vertex painting. This is the settings I have. This is uh, for the wall holder, as I call it. You can show the bevel amount, the extrude distance, the insert. Uh, you can create your own profile shape uh, for the stand, uh, as I call it. I'm not sure how it's properly called, so I called it stem. So you can create a custom shape here. You can control the amount of divisions. And the glass, uh, glass shape uh, is uh, procedurally being created uh, from the shape itself. So the amount of divisions the, the shape has, uh, it will be transferred to the glass shape also. And the uh, glass cover has these settings. You can control the thickness of the glass, bevel amount, divisions. You can create this shape. Or something like this, maybe. Something like this could be also created. So there's quite a few possibilities and variations. And, uh, and yeah, and this is uh, for real materials, uh, which you can drag and drop inside of Unreal Engine through uh, through HDA. Uh, and this will assign ma material to the corresponding geometry. So if I want to assign material to the light bulb, I can create a material instance inside of Unreal Engine and then drag and drop to this HDA parameter. And yeah, let's let me actually show you how I created it. So this is the whole node graph. It's quite simple, not a big one, and for the most part, this is related to coloring, so it's even smaller without vertex painting. So let's start uh, with uh, this, uh, this uh, wall holder. Shape itself starts with a simple circle. Uh, I have decreased the uniform scale as well as increased the divisions uh, to have more points. After that, I created thickness using poly extrude. I haven't uh, used the output back option here because it won't be visible in any case because it will be on the wall. And I also exported a front group and I have exposed this to distance and insert parameters to the HDA level. After that, I have created another poly extrude and uh, I have referenced a front group uh, from this uh, first poly extrude. Copy parameter and paste relative reference. And uh, the reason I have used it is because if I want to change this group name to something like that, it will still work because it's a channel reference and it will uh, pick up a group name no matter what the group name would be. But if I use it without channel reference, uh, but something like this, it won't work. But if I use the channel reference, it will work just fine. So this uh, polyextrude is uh, to create an inner, um, uh, inner insert, another polyextrude to create an, uh, to create a thickness and additional insert. And I have also in the polyextrude one I have also ex exported a font group and then copy parameter and paste from the reference to polyx 2 and under polyx 2 I have exposed distance and insert and uh, exported a front group also and uh, after that I, I have added a bevel exposed distance uh, just uh, bevel amount and I have changed the stop loops to simultaneously instead of individually which is the default value and I have play around with the 
ignore flat edges values because by default it will bevel all, all of the edges. After that, uh, I have created a stylized coloring, which is a vertex painting, and I will show you what is happening inside this HDA uh, in, in the end of the video. And uh, I have created a switch to enable disabled coloring, uh, which is uh, this toggle, so copy parameter and paste parameter reference, and then I created a new material uh, attribute, uh, which is new material. And I have exposed this value string parameter uh, to the HDA level, which is this. So I can drag and drop materials directly inside the engine. And I have created a group uh, for the wall holder, should be named also correctly. And just in case, I will need it later. And that's pretty much it how the wall holder was done. Uh, to create a stand, I need to place it somewhere. So a copy somewhere. So what I have done is I created a centroid point by blasting from group from this pull extrude, which is the last pull extrude. I have blasted the front group and I have left with this single polygon. Then I have uh, used extract centroid. I have changed run over to details instead of pieces. And now I have a point where I can uh, copy other part of geometry. And in this case, uh, this geometry was uh, the shape, this stand shape, as I call it. I'm not sure how it's properly called. Uh, and uh, the way this stand was done is by using a line. I have uh, changed the direction to negative Z direction. By default, it was a Y direction. I have increased the amount of points. I have used the band uh, to keep give this like bending and then I rotated it 90 degrees um, and, and then I used the match size uh, to center it uh, onto the Z max and justify Y mean and then I have created the shape and I'm uh, using the sweep node and uh, under the sweep node I have changed the surface type to round tube and I play around with the columns and radius. And I have uh, created an end caps to a single polygon. And I have exported the end caps also, which will be used uh, for the glass part of the lamp. And after that, uh, I'm copying this shape onto this point from this piece, from this polygon. Here it is. So if I preview it's barely noticeable, but it's here. And yeah, and that's how the stand part was done. And uh, also again vertex painting, coloring, unreal material, grouping it together. And let's move to the glass part. And to create a glass part, I have also uh, blasted away uh, end caps. Uh, in this case, I haven't used a channel reference, and let's quickly fix it. And the end caps comes from the sweep node, which is this one. After blasting uh, end caps, I need to select only the top part, uh, top primitive. As you can see, we have two primitives, one in, uh, at the bottom and one at the top. And uh, to select only top primitive, we can use uh, split primitives by normal from labs and this way we can get away with only one primitive as you can see and I have changed the direction to y plus plus y after that I used a match size you now to place the top part in the middle of the origin and uh, in the match size I have also used a checkbox to stage transform I will show you just in a second what it does and why it's needed after that, I'm using a poly extrude to make this extrusion. I have exposed insert and distance to the HDA level, so I can control the extrudes. These other parameters here, and everything here is by default. I have also checked uh, the transform extrude front, but I haven't actually used it. But it, it could, it's something that could be used also to give another type of variation look. Okay. 
After that, I am blasting away end caps. After that, I'm using a clip uh, to create this type of shape. And I have exposed uh, distance and uh, direction to the HDR level, so I can control the clip distance as well as the direction. And this is something that could be also tweaked. After that, I'm using a polyx row to create thickness and also using an output back option. And I have exposed the extrusion amount to the HDA level. Then I'm using a poly bevel to bevel edges and use an exclude uh, options to ignore flat edges. And then I'm using another match size to bring back geometry to its, or to its original place by restoring the X form. And the reason it's needed is because uh, I don't want to tweak uh, and use like bounding box or centroid expressions here in the clip node because let me show you. Because uh, by default it will be like something like that. And the clip, as you can see, is somewhere down below. And it still works right now, but there could be some situations where it won't work. So uh, to avoid this quote-unquote headache, uh, you can use a match size to place a geometry in the middle of the origin where everything will work as expected. And then you can use another match size to restore its original position. So in the first match size, you need to stage transform. And, yeah, and in the second match size, you need to restore its form to bring, the, bring geometry back, uh, back to its original place. You can also do it with the attribute uh, transfer by attribute, which will do the same thing. And you can, as you can see, it's, it's right now it's like so. And you, you, need, you need just to uh, use the toggle to invert transform. Both of these works. And after that, I'm using again uh, poly uh, vertex painting on real material and grouping it together. And uh, what about the light bulb? Light bulb starts with the same simple sphere. I have squished it a little bit to make this type of shape. I have uh, decreased the uniform scale. And then I have used another match size to place light bulb on top of the uh, this piece, uh, which is this one in the middle, it is the flat one. And uh, to do it, uh, I have changed the justify y to min and max. And again, I uh, created a vertex painting, but instead of HDA, I have used a simple uh, color attribute as just color, which is used inside of this HDAs. And it has uh, exposed the constant color and set operation to set initial. The default value will also work, but I have changed it to set initial just in case. And uh, then again, attribute create to create a material, grouping it together and merging everything together. After that, I have created a band soap to create uh, some sort of bending, just if I need it to create something like this. If it's something I will be looking for. And uh, you can also create a twisting. You can have a length scale. As well as a tapering. And you can manually tweak where tapering will be affected. To create another, to create more variations out of it. And uh, the only thing to keep in mind here is uh, the capture length. And here I have used the bounding box expression to capture the entire length of the object, incoming object. So if I change the, let me actually show you. Pay attention where this uh, blue arrow is located right now. So if I change the scale of the glass shape, the arrow will be transformed accordingly. But if I change to the default value, it won't be, it won't be changed accordingly. So the painting will be different right now. I mean, in this case, it still works as before, 
Oh, maybe not. Let's see actually if I change it back to the bounding box expression. And yeah, it's a different result right now. So, uh, what this expression does is uh, it, it uses a bounding box expression. Zero means uh, uh, current input, which is this one, so incoming geometry. And the uh, device size will tell Houdini to capture the entire length of the incoming object. It will capture the entire bounding box uh, height or length. I'm not sure. The entire y size, uh, the entire length in the y axis. And this is what it does. So, this is something to keep, to keep in mind. And uh, after that, I'm using a copy to points. It's a minor difference. So, I'm copying everything from here onto this single point, which I have created from this shape polygon by using extract instance for it. And after that, I'm merging everything together. So, uh, and the reason I have used this uh, copy to points because if I want to change the distance, this stand shape will, it will be placed accordingly in the right place. After that, I'm creating UVs using a switch to enable and disable it. And the way I have done UVs is by using it for each loop, uh, for each connected piece. And uh, what I have done basically is I used the unwrap a node, which is set to default values here. And this is the UVs I get. Not ideal, but I will be using word expansion anyways, so this is just in case I need them. And uh, this is something I will be revisiting. Oh okay, yeah, this is how UVs could be done. And then I'm using the match size to place an object on top of the world origin by using a, and also using a justify Z to max, because by default it will be somewhere like here. And justify minus to place it on top of the origin. And then I'm cleaning everything. Actually, not clean everything. I forgot forgot to use it. So uh, I'm, I want to remove every attribute except unreal, except UV, except color, and except normals. So before we have this lot of groups, and actually we can keep these groups. So this is groups it will be here in case I need them. And Unreal Material is a Unreal Material attribute. And then I'm creating normals, which should be here. And then I'm creating a collision geometry for the Unreal Engine. And the group name should be rendered collision geometry. And on Houdini Engine and Unreal Engine will recognize it as a collision geometry. So that's pretty much how the wall lamp was done. And what about coloring? This is very simple. So I have a base color, and uh, this base color uh, has operation set to set initial, and uh, I have exposed constant color and color correction. And uh, by setting this uh, base color to set initial, uh, we can later use uh, another attribute adjust colors, and we can specify another operation. In this case, I will uh, most of the time use an operation set to multiply to stack. Uh, colors on top of each other, basically like in Photoshop. And the reason you see ground here is here is because uh, for, the, for computing ambient occlusion. So this, this ground plane is needed to cast shadows uh, from the ambient occlusion on top of the object. So let me actually show you. So I have enabled uh, AO coloring under the wall folder. And as you can see this this is a uh, ambient occlusion effect which you get. We can also change the color of it. And without this ground plane, there will be no effect. As you can see here, it's, the effect is different now. But maybe you're looking something for something like this.
So we're not to that. Uh, uh, to create the actual ambient occlusion mask, I'm using a, a physical ambient occlusion by labs. And you can play around with the settings here. And you, I also remap in the output of, uh, on the advanced. And one, uh, one thing to keep in mind here is you need to disable visualize output. And after that, I'm blasting geometry, this grid geometry here and here. And then I'm remapping this ambient occlusion mask, which, can, uh, which I have created by using attribute just color. And you, you, you need to change the pattern type to remap attribute. And then you have an option to use, uh, to, to specify a source attribute, which I copy parameter, use the channel reference by copying parameter and testing the relative reference here. And you can also use a different range values. In this case, I have used a color ramp in all of the attribute adjust colors, most of them. And then another switch to enable or disable ambient occlusion. Same goes for the curvature, same goes for the edge color, but instead I have used the edge color node, uh, which basically the curvature and peaks and volleys, volleys, I think it's pronounced, and uh, basically convex and concave. Uh, same goes for the dirt buildup, which is a mode under the physical ambient occlusion mask uh, node. And then I have added another attribute color adjust to create a global noise. And the operation type is also set to multiply, but the pattern type I have changed it to noise. And you can play around with the noise type, element size, offset, and other parameters it provides. And uh, the last part is uh, I have added a global color correction and this is needed to let me actually show you you can change the separation brightness contrast and stuff like that so it it, it is a global color, color correction but I have also enabled a color correction to specific or to the base color So if I, have, if, I, if I have this base color, I can section it. So something like that. Like that. And the base color will be green, maybe. Oops. And then I can use this color correction only onto this color. But I can also use a global color correction. So I can change the hue of this of the base color without affecting other colors. But if I change the if I enable global color correction and if I change the hue it will affect all of the colors instead of only one color, as you can see here. So before was uh, global, and this is uh, only for the base color. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, how the vertex painting was done. And the same thing for the other part of the geometry, except uh, light bulb. As light bulb, I have used. A constant part inside and have to, we have to boost this color. As you can see here. Uh, so yeah, this is how the wall lamp was done. Hope you found it useful. And if uh, something was confusing, please uh, drop, drop a comment in the comment section and I'll answer your question. See you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.